Early in 2012, the WHO and some other funding organisations came up with a new list of what they regarded as the most neglected tropical diseases. And on that list of 17, two of them are actually diseases caused by tapeworms. Tapeworms actually cause two different types of diseases. The adult can live and grow in the gut, and that's the, the type people are most familiar with. But you also have the larval tapeworms, which can be much more dangerous. So they actually penetrate the internal organs where they grow as big cysts. These cysts or tumour-like growths grow in a cancer-like way, hugely proliferating. And it's actually that growth that does the harm. They can, cr they can crush their victims from the inside. In our study, we've looked at four genomes. The pork tapeworm, a prevalent cyst-forming tapeworm, and also a northern European one. Alongside that, the fourth one is actually a laboratory model. Tapeworm evolution is unusual because tapeworms have lost lots of morphological features, such as their eyes, their gut, they don't even have a head. And we can see that on the genomic level, this is matched, but they also lost a lot of genes, which all other animals have. The most striking thing that's, that's different about a tapeworm is they've they've actually become quite simplified in their body plan. And this is sort of encoded in the genome. And there are also clear things that we call choke points, where the metabolism, in effect, funnels into one enzyme. So if you could knock that enzyme out, then it would be a really good target for inhibition. We've produced a, a huge table of possible leads that have a chemical or a drug that could be tested. Of those, perhaps some of the most exciting ones are drugs that are currently used to treat cancer, which gets back to this issue of hugely proliferating cells. For neglected tropical disease, there isn't that um, much money around, and pharmaceutical companies are not always interested to pick up on this. So we have to try to be as smart as, and efficient as possible. And this is why we thought about doing drug reuse. So we're taking a medicine which is already approved for a different purpose, but if they also kill the tapeworm, it makes it much easier to go from the scientific discovery of finding that it kills tapeworms to actually being able to roll it out in clinics and, and give it to people.